my mask off to do an intro, just because it's really, really hard to sometimes speak in an articulate way with a mask on. So good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm gonna gonna do a quick introduction here. Um, since we went through our, our whole process of our programming exercises, just wanted to summarize a little bit about how what you're about to see ties into to that process and kind of our goals in, in presenting today. So when we went through all of our programming exercises, we were gathering up information on our preferences and our ideas about what we thought should be included in the design of the, of the church. Um, and then the building committee put together a request for proposal and hired an architect, which we have with us here today, who will present some designs. Um, and the purpose of, of that RFP was to go through and get concept design ideas. So what you're seeing here today is a progress in that process to generate images which we're gonna then use for um, fundraising. This is not the final construction drawings. Um, and even what, what is going to be presented today isn't necessarily even the final design concept. What we wanted to do at this point was to get feedback from the congregation and understand uh, if the congregation prefers the design to go in one direction or another. So we, we have put up a, a survey sheet that we would really like everyone to give feedback on and, and indicate their preference after you've seen the presentation today uh, and make comments. We do have one request to though that because these are in progress, what we are trying to do from today is pick a direction for further development. So understand that as you're making comments that things like, I think there's only one refrigerator there and I really want two, those aren't necessarily, this isn't the right time for that level of detail. We are, we are really looking at, at overall um, design ideas uh, and layout and to make sure that we're capturing uh, the big picture items. So um, with that, I will introduce our architect this is Johnny Lee with Lee Architects, who has done a, a great job of uh, putting up with all of our uh, scatteredness <laughs> through COVID-19. <laughs> so one of the uh, one of the things as we were looking at schemes that the team did was that I liked was you know there was a lot of excitement and um, a lot of wanting to move forward. But uh, you know, there was a time that everybody was like, "No, let's let's hit the brakes, and uh, really get an idea of what the church, what the congregation wants to do going forward." And so, where we're at right now, um, you're going to see drawings that were done by a computer. And a lot of times, if people see a computer drawn, you know, plan, elevation, that kind of thing, it can look like a lot of decisions have been made. Um, but I want to assure you that that's that we we are still early on, and there are two direct. You know, we kind of focused in on two directions to present today. So that's um, so the level of detail. Even though, you know, as, as was mentioned, there you can look in and see a refrigerator um, or a certain number of toilets and that kind of thing. But uh, keep in mind that we're really what we really want to do is cast the idea of um, this is what the church could look like. I, what it could look like here, how big it would be in relation to the site. Um, both schemes kind of are in agreement there. You know, the, the church is, we, we kind of established a place for it. But when you get into looking at what the church would look like on the outside, that's something we want feedback from. Uh, we have two different directions to show you. What it looks like on the inside, we have two different directions to show you. So what, what I would like to do is just kind of um, high level walk through the two different ideas and or maybe one idea or I don't know if we're going to go through both and then ask for questions or I think we can pause in, in between okay and, and so I'll, I'll walk through one and we can kind of talk through it and then we'll go through another one and then and then maybe kind of wrap up and talk you know through both so, so do we want to move the yeah. yep Yep. Okay. 
So just to orient everybody, 104th, we're in this building. Um, as you turn on to Luther Court, one of the things that the committee, um, what everybody sort of wanted to see happen was the church would have not only a presence and a relationship with the existing church school, but also have a presence off of 104th. One of the things that the, the committee focused in on early on was that they wanted to have a building that looked like a church. And so if people were driving by, they wouldn't think, oh, what is that over there? You know, they would see it and think, oh, a church, um, and, which isn't the case with all of our church clients. We have some church clients that um, may seem odd to people, but they, you know, they don't necessarily want it to look like a church to people. Um, not the case here even talked about having a cross, some sort of a tower element. Um, so for today, um, uh, initially, we're going to go through what we're calling Scheme A. So the new building would be sitting here, kind of at the intersection of the two streets. One of the things we've done is oriented the parking to kind of go along with what's already here on the site. You can see a, uh, an open space here. Uh, that's an area that the committees looked at as possibly being future parking. Um, there could also be some sort of a, uh, an event that happens there, whether it be a, a gazebo, some kind of a park element. Not really sure, but we're kind of keeping some space open there in case something wants to happen to kind of connect these two buildings. One of the things that, um, that the committee brought to light and this keep in mind that like some of these things you know whether something happens here or not may be a phase one or a phase two item another phase one or phase two item um, might be the pavilion we talked we talked about a few different ideas of where the pavilion could be um, one idea was even some sort of like a pavilion element could happen here um, one of the ideas was to have it not in the parking, but set aside where um, events could happen where you didn't feel like you were right in the middle of parking. And so that's that's depicted here. The the exact size of it and what what all it can do is something we're still in process on. One of the things that pavilion does do is set up an axis, and so the axis here would be starting kind of in a, um, a pedestrian fashion off of 104th. And even though the committee doesn't foresee a lot of people walking to church, uh, that doesn't mean it can't be a welcoming gesture to the community. And so um, there would be a, a smaller entrance here coming through the property um, to a larger entrance out to the pavilion. And so there's the axis that's set up there. One of the things the committee really wanted to look at was uh, the view and making sure that we have at least a, a place to appreciate the, the mountains and looking out over the school. We talked a little bit about where does it make the most sense to have a view from. One of the things that a lot of people liked was the idea of a, a view being um, taken in by a lobby space, foyer, narthex. And so that's going to happen here with uh, views out over the school to the mountains. What we're showing here is something that's undefined right now, but it's a, a cross tower is what we're calling it. And that would be some kind of a vertical element that would, if people didn't recognize the, the shape of the building, they would for sure know it's a church by that. Uh, we have landscaping shown around the building. We've got a playground that would be for younger children, medium children, and then potentially student ministries. One of the thing with, uh, one of the ideas is being by a school, schools here is the um, wanting to set aside some area for students, <coughs> student ministries, high school, junior high, that kind of thing to have their own space, both in the, in the building and outside. We are showing that, um, some future expansions thought of. 
who knows what God's going to have in mind for the church. In, in, you know, uh, jurisdictional authorities, their governing laws could change over time and that kind of thing, but it's good to plan. It's good to plan for something to happen. And so this is where we're picturing that. Showing a monument sign here. You have one right now. Um, this would be one that would be dedicated to the church. Something right along 104th that would be very visible. Uh, I'd, I'd like to go to the inside, but do you want to add anything to... So we're still on scheme A. This is the axis cutting through the building that we saw, we talked about earlier. So we rotated just slightly. And so kind of walking through um, the building, even though there is an entrance here, we're picturing the main entrance, by far the most people uh, would be coming from this side. One of the things that um, that we talked about as a committee was really making sure that the entrance had a welcoming feel to it. Uh, what does welcoming mean? That's something that you know we have to define and we've been working on. One of the things for sure it meant was ample room so that especially if a couple of services were happening that you could come in and not feel immediately like you're in the way. Uh, but indifference to being in the way there would be spaces that you could go to. They were kind of outside of the circulation here. One of the ones that um, I'm really excited about, I think everybody is, is uh, the idea of what we're calling a living room. Um, that would be a, a space that, um, you know, how is that used during the week? How is it used on the weekend? Those are things that, um, one of the things that I, I like to do as an architect is provide some flexibility and so um, could there be a small group happening on a Wednesday night? Absolutely. Um, could there be uh, something from the platform, the altar, where you said, hey, let's meet in the living room. If you're interested in this or that, and it's something that would be recognizable for people, I think even for somebody who came here for the first time as a visitor, um, you could say, we're going to meet in the living room and kind of briefly describe where that would be. It's a, it's a room that would have windows and be open off of the lobby. So the idea is that if an event, let's say an event were to happen in the evening and it would occur here, it could, if there were enough people, it could spill out into this area. To give you a sense of scale, um, if people were kind of sitting in here uh, at tables and chairs, kind of like, or even just tables, like and chairs like we're or even just chairs like we're seeing here you could get about 45 people in here if it spilled out in here it could be upwards of 50 maybe more um, walking through so there's the there's sort of the living room on the left as you walk in to the right would be administration and so we're picturing um, not a ton of offices but um, kind of two with the potential of maybe three people working full time there, but being able to look out into this space and have a, um, a visual reference of who's coming in and out. Um, coming in to this lobby area, we've got a, um, a built-in sort of coffee area with a, um, a countertop with tables on both sides, or I'm sorry, chairs on both sides. So that would be seen as sort of like a, um, a cafe atmosphere where you could come in, you could have uh, access to Wi-Fi and that kind of thing. And we, we're hoping that this kind of area would be used not just on a Sunday, but a lot during the week. As you look kind of over here, we're thinking of this being sort of the public side of things with the sanctuary, the living room, the lobby. On this side of the plan, um, we would have the ability to shut off this corridor with doors. And those are seen as sort of a security measure, something that the church, if, if wanted, could close those as service started and kind of make this a secure area. 
with the idea of in this area being children's. We're showing right now just generic classrooms. We do have ideas of how those could be used, um, but again, would love the idea of some flexibility for the church. With that in mind, we've got a removable partition shown in between these two classrooms. So that could open up and become one larger classroom. The same thing could happen here. We've got a classroom and a conference room shown. So a lot of flexibility. One of the things that kept being brought up was storage. So we have a, a storage room that's shown here. It doesn't mean I can, that's the only storage that could happen, but we wanted to make sure, at, even at this level, that we had some space that was set aside for storage. It kind of walks through this area. Um, one of the things that I didn't mention was um, the bathroom. So we'd have men and women's right here. One of the things that we like to really protect is sight lines. And so if you're in the lobby and a door is open, um, you can't like see in and see people doing whatever they're doing, but some privacy there. So talking about the sanctuary, we are picturing right now having stackable chairs like you have here. So there would be some flexibility there too in how you have it set up. One of the main flexibilities that we talked about was whether or not there's a main center aisle. One of the things the committee felt strongly about was making sure that if a wedding, when a wedding was taking place, it, there could be a center aisle for the bride. On a given Sunday, um, there would be flexibility on having a center aisle or as it's shown right now, we have two main entrances and two main aisleways going in. And again, those are flex it's flexible, so those seats can be moved, but that's, that's what's depicted here. 200 seats are shown. Sound booth we're showing here. One of the things that uh, everyone liked the idea of was having a, ra a raised platform, because it's gonna be a larger room, and you do have a raised platform, but this one would be a little bit higher uh, with the idea of having steps kind of along the whole front, a pretty modest sacristy behind. One of the things that we talked about a little bit, even in the site plan, was having a playground and an area for student ministries. The playground right now we're showing is being accessed off of this sort of secure area, which I think would be really nice. And so if you, for children on a Sunday, I, there's, you know, whether they're in the main service or out, they could be in a section here where it's, it's secure and they can have an area where doors could shut down and there's really no reason to be in this area unless you either have a child with you as you're an adult. There's no reason to be as an adult in this area unless you have a child with you or you're picking one up. So we're pretty excited about that component of this plan. And with that in mind, you can securely access this playground from inside this area. Talking about students, youth, um, the junior and senior high kind of ministry, one of the things the committee wanted to do is have a space that was sort of set aside that didn't just feel like a classroom, but felt like something a little different. Also felt, felt like it was its own place. And so what we're showing here is still in progress, but um, whether these are you know, a garage door potentially where students could come in and out and have their own space out here, whether it's a barbecue area or some kind of other outdoor activity. One of the things that's depicted is what we're picturing and calling the mountain view is something that, you know, is pretty expansive. You can see mountains, you know, along a whole range, but you can see what we're trying to do with the window walls in the living room with the visual access off of the lobby is really capturing that view. We're also picturing having windows in the sanctuary that could have the view also, but the committee really wanted to focus on 
people appreciating the view more from the lobby. We can look at the elevations if we want. So this is, because the building's at a little bit of an angle, um, the, these views, we, we tried to pick views that would most accurately depict what it would look like. One of the things that's brought, that was brought up a lot by the committee was the idea of ascension. And one of the ways that you can do that effectively as an architect for space is with roof forms. Right now, in your sanctuary, it's flat. We're picturing a, um, a sloped ceiling, basically, where the high point would be over the altar or platform. And so the entrance feature would be in a glass area that, that I think would be recognizable. One of the things that uh, we'd like to do is have, when people come to the facility, that they never feel lost. When they're, when they're pulling off of the, the, the main street, they would be able to say, oh, that's where the entrance is. I can see where I'd want to go to come in. Um, oh, and then you could also get an idea of the, um, some of the other things that are happening through glass. Right now, the, the cross tower is something that we're still you know, working through. What does it look like? What's it exactly made of is, is something that's still in progress, but Right now, um, it would be what I would consider to be a, um, an interpretation of a, of a more traditional cross tower. So something that I think would, I think would be appealing to people that um, wanted a more traditional look, but also that were okay with a more contemporary look. I think it would be, we're hoping that it's something that would be attractive to people driving by. So the actual materials, we do have materials called out, but um, as was mentioned earlier, we don't want to get too focused in on specifics, but more general direction. So if you could just, in your mind, sort of think, okay, here is a direction that's associated with Scheme A. Before we move on to the next scheme, uh, we'll take questions or comments from the group, and you're able to get those off of Facebook as well. So is there anything that anyone would like additional explanation about? Yes, that's a good question. Right now we have a grand piano shown here. So we, approximately like the same spacing and setup we have now. It, it wouldn't be as, it wouldn't, it, it would be deeper than what you have right now and less wide. Um, that doesn't mean like right now what you have is uh, you're kind of, you've got a platform area and then you're sort of spilling off of it to do other things. We, we, we are picturing having enough room that that wouldn't, that wouldn't need to happen, that everything could happen up on the platform. Uh, even, even with uh, some risers for a choir show. It's not overly generous. I, I think that um, potentially if you were to have a, um, a bigger production on say a an Easter or a Christmas, you may still want to come off to the sides, but I don't think, I think we're showing a big enough platform that you wouldn't need to do it every week. But uh, with that said, you know, that's just a, the piano is a placeholder. It's, it's not meant to be the exact location always. We'd like to, you know, have the platform also be able to be flexible, meaning there would be different areas to plug in and that kind of thing if you were to go to um, any kind of monitors or that kind of thing on the on the platform. Yes. What are the dimensions of the platform? And how big is that? So the the platform is about four hundred square feet. Um, 
this that circle is hard to read. There is a dimension on it. Can you read it over there? Twenty feet. Okay, it's about twenty feet from the middle to the the circle. It's not super easy to say, how, you know, the dimensions of it because it's sort of at an angle. But it's pretty big. Yes. I didn't notice. Is there like a drop off area for the front door? Yeah, maybe go back if we can go back to the yes. site plan. Uh, or the site plan, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Go. And so we don't have a formal covered drop off or anything like that, but there is an area that's I would consider it to be pretty generous where you're not going to be behind cars. It's meaning there's no parking here. There would be an area where you could, you know, drive your car and and drop people off along this sidewalk with the main, you know, with the main sidewalk area being here. And so, um, you know, we we didn't we didn't feel like it was necessary to have a full formal section, but there is a place to drop off. I think that would be safe. She can't enlarge. I don't know if it's helpful. <laughs> yeah, I got a little close. Yeah, that's. Awesome. Yeah. So the idea is, you would, you know, you would, you would drive in, and all along here, you could pull over and and drop people off. There would still be parking on this side, but it's sort of a a, a single loaded drive aisle. By the way, um, you were you were right. Um, I'm finally looking at the measurements on the altar. Um, 382 square feet, and it says uh, 26 OCC. I'm guessing that's occupancy. Yeah. And then it says at 15 square feet. Yeah. Can you read the dimension? It's kind of yeah, in the system. 23 um, by uh, yeah 23. Yeah, so I said I said that that circle area of the altar was 20, and it's really 23 feet. So I think it would be a lot more functional than than I, I don't know about functional, but it would be deeper in a way that um, I don't think you would feel as as wide as you do here. I think it would feel a little more deep and focused. All right, I do have a few comments and questions from online. If, if it's appropriate at this time. <clears throat> One comment is, uh, love the access and visibility to the worship area from the main hall. So that was one comment. Um, then uh, one question is, are there windows to the lobby from the living room? Yeah, that's a, that that's question. a great question. Um, one, of the, one of the things we actually spent a decent amount of time talking about was the relationship between the living room and the lobby and the front door. And right now, um, what we're picturing is a a change of, there would be a change of ceiling that would happen from the lobby to this living room. And there would potentially be a change of flooring. But in terms of windows, doors, anything like that, no, it would be, it would be wide open. And the idea there is, is that we really wanted this living room not to be, not to feel, especially for somebody coming for a first time, it would feel like an open, accessible thing and not something that was closed and behind doors. I think the question was between the sanctuary and the living room. 
Oh, between here? Yeah. It was between the lobby and the living room. Oh, lobby. I'm sorry. But I'm sorry. I, I mean, it would be good to talk about that too. Um, right now, we're not we're not picturing windows between the live. I know this wasn't asked, but um, between the living room and the sanctuary. Uh, right now, we're not picturing windows. There could be, but but at this time, we're not picturing that. Um, they just said I am asking about living room and sanctuary. So, yeah. Oh, okay. So, it turns okay. out that was the question after all. Okay. So these, right now, we're showing windows here between the lobby and the sanctuary. Right now, we're not showing windows there. That's something that, that we could have. I will say that something uh, that's, that's difficult to really grasp when you're just looking at a plan like this is how important wall space is, which may sound a little funny, but... Um, when you think about it, you think about allowing people to understand different kind of ministries. Let's say you've got a, a mission um, in, you know, initiative that you're wanting to do, and you're wanting to let people know what the church is doing in different parts of the world, anything like that, or even a men's ministry that's coming up, event that's coming up. It's really nice just to have some wall space. And so, if anything, I feel like that's something we need to look at. Like, you know, the, if we really did have that much window, it would be great on a given Sunday, um, especially if there was a wedding. I, I do think that we, as we, as the design progresses, we want to really make sure we have enough wall space. So, if if windows happened here, maybe maybe that means that more wall space happens here. Um, but right now, right now, these are showing windows. And that's a wall. Anything else? Oh. Where is the if parents with small children when the kids start screaming and mom wants to take them out, right. where does she go? So that was also asked online as well. Yeah. We we had previously discussed that rather than a separate crime room that we would use the, the lobby space for that purpose rather than having it closed off. So it may actually be the living room. Okay. Yes. Could be. Yeah. On the, on the hall for the classrooms, the kids' room area, where is the other closed off door at? I see the top one. Yeah, where's the other? So if you go take that picture up. I'll go down it. We're, we're working on the answer. Yeah. <laughs> right there. Right there. Right there. Okay, so, yeah, and so that, that, that brings up a great point. So right now, the, the secure lines would be here and here. Okay. That, you know, it was mentioned that that does mean that the bathrooms are outside of that secure area, which kind of goes both ways. Um, one of the things that the committee felt more strongly about was if an adult needed to go to the bathroom, they don't have to go into the secure area. That does mean right now that children would have to go out of the secure area to go to the bathroom, but that I, I view that as being quite a bit more safe. We will still need a unisex bathroom, and perhaps we could put that unisex bathroom within reach of the children's area, and they could go and use that. Absolutely. Yeah, so there, there could be a, a unisex bathroom that would be potentially somewhere in this area. It does add cost, um, and so it's something that we need to look at. I, they're really nice to have, and so um, it, could, it could very easily happen right here, and so that when this is shut, it could service both classrooms. more questions. Um, one uh, comment and a question is tall stage would require a long ramp. Would that be interior or exterior? <clears throat> tall stage would require a long ramp. 
would that be interior or exterior? I believe he's talking about the altar being raised. Yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's something we haven't really talked about at length as a committee. And so there's two, when it comes to providing a ramp, there's sort of two things involved. One of them is what does the church want? And the other is what would the authority recommend or require? And I, we, I don't know... Um, <laughs> I don't know what the, and so we haven't really spoken about what the church would want. If they want to have a, a ramp for someone with disabilities to get to the platform, that's something that can happen in a couple of different ways. They're right, by the way. If, if you're up a certain height, ramps can get really, really long. Um, right now, um, if we get back to the plan, it, it was, I think we're showing, we're not showing a ton of, um, steps up to the platform but each step could be about seven inches that's good right there um, and so what we're showing right now could be about 21 inches of vertical separation from the ground of the platform and that would be 21 feet of ramp and so if the church decides that they don't need to have a ramp every week there are ways to get around being required one So right now there's no ramp seen. We haven't really talked about it too much. I don't know if, if the church would, you know, if the church elects to have one that's permanent, we can provide one. Okay. I've, I've, on the churches that don't want one, what I've written is um, removable, pla or no, uh, adjustable platform by owner. And, and so there, if, you, if the church doesn't want to have a ramp, there's ways around it. Um, so on those stairs, do you know if there's uh, railings anywhere on there for those who have a little harder problem getting up on the stairs? We're, we're low enough that um, it's, we don't necessarily have to have rails. Having said that, I think it would be I think it would be a good idea to have at least one rail on the two side stairs, if not two rails, just so that if if somebody's a little shaky getting up and down stairs, they have an option. I I wouldn't necessarily recommend a, a lot of rails along the front. However, we could have a couple. So another question is. Where would there be lights in the entryway and outside? I don't know if that's too specific for right now. It, it's a little specific. We, we're going to be required to have some lighting around the building for security. Um, but we haven't, yeah, we haven't really got there. But, yeah. but just, just to answer the question, if, if what they're asking is, it, is it going to feel welcoming? We hope so. We're, gonna re we're really focused on trying to make it feel welcoming during the day and at night. There's another fairly specific uh, question, but I'll go ahead and forward it on anyway. Is there a place for member mailboxes or literature? It's not drawn yet. Not drawn yet. <laughs> <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't talked at that, that, that detail. Yeah. We, so we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. Do you want to generally talk about the kiosks, which, which we had a brief conversation about? Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, that's a great thing to, to, to talk about. One of the things that... Um, that the, the committee is kind of, we've talked about and wanting to go in a direction, is rather than having fixed um, counters where people could go and get information and that kind of thing, the idea is to have kiosks that, um, that could move and that nobody would actually be behind a counter, but they would be kind of beside it, and so it's more of a, a relational feel.
Okay, so we're we're switching over to the second scheme, scheme B. Um, church is in the same general area, and it's facing you know the same general direction. The pavilion in this case has moved up into this space, but that could happen whether it's scheme A or B. But we wanted to just show it in a different different location. Future expansion is here. So one of one of the a couple of changes. One is that on on this scheme we're showing a less formal uh, drop off, and so there is still an area for drop off definitely, but there is parking here also, and that's something we just need to talk about with the committee with the church is how important it is to have you know these these will be the best parking spaces so. Mm -hmm. Um, that you know that should be considered. Future expansion here again. In this case, the playground's here, and that's really a function of just the. You'll see when we go inside, but the children's classrooms moved, and so we want we moved the playground to be with them. Other than that, this is pretty similar. Why it does not look like the one we just paged in. So. Oh, that's the same. Okay, so this is the inside of Scheme B. I'll just quickly walk you through. Some you'll see some of the same ideas: lobby, living room, with, in this case, a larger kitchen off of that. Um, by larger, I would consider this to be a pretty ample kitchen. That would be a, a pretty nice sized center island with walking around on all around it. Here would be the the sort of cafe feel with the bar stools. In this case, you're walking in a main entrance directly to the front door into the sanctuary. The living room in this case, as you walk in, would be to your right. We, again, wanted to have the office spaces and conference room, the kind of administrative block, being able to have visual control of the entrance. One of the things that that should be mentioned about this scheme is the I, it could be done in both in this one the possible there is a possibility of um, potentially growing the sanctuary in a different way that we would call internally expandable here is the classrooms three classrooms again like the other scheme we tried to Try to not change everything around, but keep you know the same amount of classrooms, the same amount of offices, same amount of seats in the sanctuary. So those those are going to be things that are pretty consistent. This one does have a larger kitchen, but the other one could have a larger kitchen too. It's it's more just a right now we're just exploring ideas of um, how the building overall functions. In this case, the the toilets are separated. One of the things that the committee liked was the idea of having a, what I would call a more relational sanctuary where people aren't, it's not a really narrow, deep space, but it's more of a wide space. The platform is a similar height and a similar size. This one's a little bit bigger, but um, that can, those all can be adjusted. Maybe look at the elevation unless you'd like to add something. So you got anything on that for questions? Yeah. So here, for Scheme B, here's the elevation concepts. Pretty different looking building. And so I think that right now um, in our discussions, what we're hoping to generate is ideas on character 
more than um, detail. And so what the, you know, this is, this is showing a type of stone, but what type of stone and that kind of thing, or is it really, is it real stone or, that's something we haven't got to yet, but it's more the, the general feel of the elevation. One of the, um, one of the terms that was used for this scheme was um, it could have maybe potentially has more of a mountain feel to it. I think they both, to me, they both could be, they both could feel in a similar way, you know, on the spectrum of contemporary to tr traditional. I think they both look like churches. I think they both feel like church. And if people were driving by that didn't know what it was, I think they would see it and think, oh, that's a church. In this case, the the uh, tower element isn't isn't as tall or kind of set aside. It's kind of part of the building. And in this one, we are showing more of a formal drop off. It could be covered. It could not be. It's something we we haven't. You know, that's something that you know when we look at budget, we'll we'll be able to answer a little more clearly. Yeah, it could be added. That's right. So this, a covered porch or covered drop-off could be added as, a, as another phase. All right. Are you ready to move on to a few questions and comments? Okay. Are there doors for the classroom areas again that seal off? Yes. Um, yeah, in this case. And would they have access to like an intersex bathroom? Or sure. Yeah, in the, that I would say that's handled pretty similarly. In this case, the the access to the children's area is more of a it's more of one door going in, and the other one was more of a pass through kind of thing. So you just seal the yeah, it's sealable. Now, why this is yes. I know you're saying that. That wasn't intentional. Um, Just based on where the building is and the distance. The way it's kind of focused. Okay. I, I, it wasn't, uh, it, that wasn't something that we set out to do. Um, it was just the, you know, the way the building was oriented. But that's what I'm seeing. Is that correct? Am I understanding those drawings correctly? Yeah, I, I don't. I know why you're saying that. I think that if you, if both of those buildings somehow magically were built in the same spot, just as we have drawn, I don't think that the general public would think, oh, look at that one's facing, you know, I think it would just be seen off the road. And I think that you would be able to clearly see them, you know, both directions. But I, I definitely, I didn't, I didn't notice that. I know why you're saying that. Yes. The children's play area on this one, so it's like right by a number of clubs there. So how secure is that? Yeah, that's something that we did talk about. Um, so good point. So one of the playgrounds is is facing right toward the main road. Um, it would have, it would be fenced, and so is it secure? I think so. Um, we did talk about the pros and cons of that. There is something nice about people driving by, seeing children playing. Um, it, it does say that your children are important. It does say there are fun activities that are happening here. And it does say that the facility is being used. The, I, rather than security, um, one of the things that the team really talked about was just sound. And um, if, it was, if it would be noisier there, um, But we are we are picturing that that being a, a, 
offense. And so I, I do know what you're saying. They are they would be more more toward the street. But there is a lot of landscaping intended right around that area too, which which would shield that view. How much space between the play area and the Yeah, so this is this is sixty feet, and so it's it's about sixty feet. And but if you if you were a child and you were wanting to let's not wanting to, but if to get hurt by a car, <laughs> you would have to go over a fence, through some landscaping, over a sidewalk, and then out. You know, so it would be. Okay. I, I think the the biggest thing would be if they were kicking balls or something. <laughs> That you might lose you might lose more balls this way to the street, I think. Yeah. Well, and one of the things that could be possible is if like, you really wanted to, to be a little let's just say over the front if you drew a line between the front door and the back of the sanctuary and then flipped it over that line and put the play area on the south side. So yeah, so side. that's that's true. It, we could basically mirror the building along this yeah. axis and the playground would come over here. I still, and we haven't, all we've done is really brought up the question as a committee, is it, is it good to have a playground visible from, from a street? Right. Um, I wouldn't say that we've completely landed on it, but that is, we could very easily just do that. Yeah. And then the so playground would be. That, yeah, I mean, it's inviting to see children that's good work. and play. Yeah, if if somebody decided, if a child decided that they were just, you know, my ball. Yeah, <laughs> something. Yeah, something. Yeah. yeah, that no, that's a good point. Johnny. Yes. Um, scheme A, which is great length to utilize the field and that would be in that library. Would we have some of that view also in scheme B? Yes. Uh, they both do take into, definitely take into account the, the view looking out over the, the mount, you know, the, the school into the mountains. Um, they, they do it in a different way. Um, in this one, I would say the, the main focus of the view is also part of the circulation, um, which is not a good or a bad thing. It's just different. Um, but yeah, they both, they both definitely could have views out. Uh, in, in scheme A, I feel like um, the view is like a place to, to hang out and enjoy the view. I feel like in scheme A has more of an opportunity for that, like meaning there's a, there's a more of a defined formal room looking out uh, the living room. Uh, it, it it does happen here also, and so I, I would say they both do. Yes. Um, so this one has less windows then, or like less total windows. It one of the things that I I didn't, um, yeah I I would say this one would have less windows. The in in part of that something I didn't bring up with the other scheme with scheme A, there was more of an opportunity for high windows. Um, along the lobby, which could be pretty cool, uh, that I didn't bring up, but yeah, I would say this one would have less windows. Um, not a question, really, just an observation that um, I, I appreciated personally how um, pretty much all, almost all of the elements in Scheme A are seen in Scheme B just in a little different way. There was one element I noticed that is in Scheme A and is not in Scheme B, and that is that that sort of sidewalk uh, entry from the corner, uh, which I thought was kind of nice. It's it's unfortunate it doesn't really fit into this scheme, but um, I like that about Scheme A. Just an observation, a personal observation. And there's no questions online yet um, for, about this scheme. One of the things that both schemes have that I didn't really make a big deal of, and we, we're not really sure as a committee how much um, attention we put toward it, but there could be something in the living room that would be um, very, 
that could be very recognizable, something that from the platform, from the altar that could be said, hey, let's meet at the living room by the fireplace. In this case, both both schemes have a fireplace that um, that I think could be sort of a landmark within the church. Hi, I don't know if you can see me. Um, yeah, so I mean, the the idea behind all that was we wanted a big space as you first walk in, first of all, because it's welcoming, but also so that we could use it for a lot of different things. Um, both of them, the, the lobbies are big enough that we could actually have fellowship meals out there if we wanted to. Some of those we're thinking about maybe expanding even for worship if we need to overflow out into the lobby. Um, just all kinds of things that could happen. You think about some of the events that we put on already, like a craft fair, um, all of that, the lobby would be big enough to handle a lot of that. And so instead of having a fellowship hall here and a Bible classroom here and a thing over there, we're trying to combine all of that into one space without walls just so that we can use it for however we, however we see fit. That, with the Mountain View. With, with the Mountain View, yeah. So, right, yeah. That, does that satisfy, Natalie? Is that what you wanted me to yes, say? Yes, I, I wanted people to understand why we were spending that real estate there. And yeah. It's really key to the design of the whole building. Yeah, and I think it really makes it welcoming. Yeah, so. yeah one, one thing that, that was brought up there that I, that I think could be said, could be said again is, um, you know, when, when we've done spaces for churches that, you know, in this case, we're calling it the living room, that um, that can be a that can be kind of set aside and have um, be a really nice space. You know, it could have a higher ceiling. It could have views of the mountains. Um, if if it can be somewhere in between where the seats are and where cars are, so much the better, especially for first time visitors. Because as you're leaving, and you're wanting to in, you know invite fellowship from people, if they don't have to go out of their way and through doors and <coughs> Oh, it's over there, kind of thing. Um, it's really helpful, and so these, this living room concept, I think, is something that um, when churches get, they love it, and even if it, and they they'll churches will go out of their way to have their events in that space, you know, with the high ceiling and with a view and just a nice set apart area, that even if it's nowhere, you know, in, in both of these cases, we're trying to have it in a good spot you know it's kind of it's kind of in that path of travel between the you know the sanctuary the parking lot it's accessible but even in in churches where it's not when it's over to the side uh churches love them and they they have all of their events there and so we're trying to make that as we're trying to facilitate that by having the kitchen there by having it in the right spot and that kind of thing and with the mountain view so we're pretty excited about it dovetail into that there's an online question asking about square footage between scheme a and scheme b and if they're the same or if one's larger than the other so perhaps those two questions are similar yeah yeah, yeah just to give a, an idea of of size hold it one second yeah it's perfect um this is about this is about 35 feet you know it goes in and out a little bit so between so let's just say 30, 35 feet by 70 feet, maybe a little more. So a pretty big space. You know, it's big enough that it's not going to be, you know, the lobby that you have now is is good enough for people to, you know, kind of move in and out of and that kind of thing. 
this would be big enough to be its own room and have its own activities. The square footage, a little over 8,000 square feet is shown. Um, at, that's, that's something that right now, both schemes are, should be seen as the same. Yes. So, again, if I'm looking at these designs correctly, the flexibility of overflow from the sanctuary to the entryway area is not as much in this scheme because the bathrooms are there and, of course, they're fixed. In the other one, there were glass walls or doors or just removable walls or something so that the sanctuary, if it overflowed would still feel part of the service is that yeah that's right on the money that's that's really astute that so I, I feel like um, so going back to the scheme a one thing that she mentioned was that if you know you know Lord Lord willing if the room is is packed and there's overflow and that kind of thing the comment was that this scheme scheme a seems to seems to handle that a little bit more gracefully um, yes it does okay. and and that that is something that I I, I actually like the okay. the relationship of this axis and how it how it you know it handles both the the sanctuary and the living room I think there's something that uh, is just a little more graceful about that Johnny could we yeah. modify Yeah, no, no. Things can so be done to that. to both. Um, yeah, and so could we could we open this up and right. so that it, um, you know, so that more interaction could happen? I think we could. And yet, yes, bathrooms do not want to get moved. That's that's one of the most you know, kitchens and bathrooms are expensive to move. I would note we did have conversations about the fact that while we we might have some strategies if we ever had to expand on the worship space, the intention was that we would not, that we were hitting kind of the limit of, of what the Synod wants us to hit in terms of the size of the church and that we would go to multiple services before necessarily trying to have a worship space that was 400 people. No, no, th this seats 200, but, but oh. our goal was not to make a worship space that was uh, a, a really huge space. So no other questions online, and just a time check, uh, second service starts in about nine minutes, so we should probably yeah. wrap up. Okay. All right, well, Great. and I will, will comment that um, uh, everyone has the opportunity to make written comments as well as vote on the scheme that they prefer and the link to that is in the same location as the links to to the plans on the Living Hope website. So please, we really are actually looking for more than just participation today to actually get sort of a tally on where the preference lies. So please make a point of responding to that. You don't necessarily have to do it within the next five minutes. It could be uh, sometime over the next few days and then we'll, we'll give a report on, on where we're sitting by next Sunday. Everyone. Yeah. Everyone should fill it out. Yes. So. There's anyone who is involved with the church at all should, should feel free to fill one out, not just one per household. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so, Johnny, thank you thank so you. much for coming. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye.